There are a few sounds that are synonymous with Hong Kong. The bell of the Ding Ding trams, the chopping of meat at a wet market. However, there is one sound that is closer to the heart of many Hong Kongers than any other, and that is the unmistakable reverberations of towels click-clacking against the table. This is the sound of mahjong, the traditional game that is an integral part of the city's culture in a way quite unlike anything else. In this episode, we're going to delve into this priceless piece of local tradition and learn about Mahjong's story, its rise and slow decline, its impact on local culture, and in the process, we'll be meeting two Hong Kongers that are fighting to keep this part of their heritage alive, including one of the last traditional Mahjong tile carvers in the city and a Mahjong tutor who's going to explain the rules and hopefully make a competent Mahjong player out of me. So stay tuned as we click-clack our way around the city and immerse ourselves in the game of the people. This is Hong Kong Hoods. Hey guys, thanks as always for joining me. We're here right now in Jordan, a neighborhood synonymous with Mahjong here in Hong Kong. Traditionally home to many Mahjong shops and Mahjong parlors, and as good a place as any to delve into the history of this much loved game. Although the exact origins of the game remain unclear, with many believing it to have evolved from ancient Chinese card games, the Mahjong that we know today rose to prominence in 19th century China. And by the early 20th century, it had grown in popularity, not just on the mainland and here in Hong Kong, but also throughout Asia and in parts of the US and Europe. A couple of road bumps aside, Mahjong continued to grow through the 20th century and developed numerous regional styles, with Hong Kong Mahjong becoming ever more intertwined with local culture until it transcended merely a four-player strategy game to become an almost sacred pastime bound up in local identity, with many households around the city proudly owning a set of Mahjong tiles, with which they played every day to socialize and solidify bonds with family and friends. Unfortunately, after decades of almost uninterrupted popularity, there's evidence to suggest that interest in Mahjong, especially among the younger generations, is on the decline, with the 2017 survey revealing less than a fifth of Hong Kongers reported playing Mahjong at least monthly, down from almost a third just five years prior to that. This downturn in interest is concerning, but fortunately there is a man around here who is single-handedly, well, technically double-handedly, keeping Mahjong culture alive. You see, Chun Chun King is one of only a couple of artisans left in the city who hand carves Mahjong tiles in the traditional way that was practiced before machine carved tiles became a thing. And this pretty much makes him the embodiment of traditional Mahjong culture in these parts. So let's go and talk to the man about his craft and the state of Mahjong in general. Building 在我來說,我做了起碼都過了五十年 
，因為香港冇咩師傅挑噶啦，識就好多，但係挑咧就好少好少噶啦。我哋嗰陣係冇娛樂噶嘛，係打麻雀啫嘛，早三四十年，個個打埋話而家點止啊？打麻雀排嬲尾啊，喺手機都打得到啦，所以正式麻雀鋪好少，除非真係做咯。呢二十幾年都冇麻雀鋪開過，啊！冇人開過，咪只有執。我挑牌咧，五日至一個禮拜啊，挑一副，咁一個月都係挑幾副嘅啫嘛。我挑呢，就我起曬最難嗰啲先，挑咗個輪廓先再執翻靚。做嗰行就冇得享受噶啦，粉身大佬，一年三百六十五日，我做咗一年三百六十四日，我系年初一休息日。咁我呢年纪住咩啫？一系又退休，一系咧就你翻嚟有个寄托。如果唔唔冇寄托啊，人都易老啲。唔<笑>好意思啊，我唔识打麻雀啊<笑>，我我我唔识打麻雀，我冇兴趣。边有时间啫？我日日都喺铺头。休息啊，當休息我都唔會打麻雀，我冇瞓下覺。個個都問有可唔可以傳承落去？以我嘅諗法呢，就唔可以噶啦，因為你冇咁嘅生意，養唔起嗰個師傅。好似我啊，我都唔嗌我啲仔女做啦，做第二行仲有發圍啦。啲人有興趣知嘅話呢，咁我咪開啲工作坊咯。咁啊，我咪解釋俾佢聽點樣做法。教佢，佢有一隻牌俾佢，真係挑過嘛，咁佢咪仲好記住咯。做嗰個方咧，個人都開心啲。通常做真功方嗰啲冚埋後生仔，好好玩噶。我我教好多，好有好多外國人學噶。咁咧就唔會失傳咁快脆啦。多啲人知道咧，就可以攤長啲時間，咁或者有機會有得做啊嘛。That was incredible. It was so interesting to meet Uncle King and see firsthand how he's flying the flag for old Mahjong culture in the city. I think I need to take a breather now to let that all sink in. So let's go and grab some refreshment at a special Mahjong themed hostel just across town in Tokwa Wan. So we've ducked into the Mahjong, which is a Mahjong themed hostel, co-working space and chill out spot. And it's super cool in here. It's really quirky. There's a lot of cool decorations on the wall and it makes it super Instagrammable as well. And it's really nice to see Mahjong promoted in such a way that's going to be influential and inspiring to young people. So we're going to spend a bit of time there, relax, uh, I'm going to enjoy this coffee and then we're going to head over and meet our Mahjong tutor for the afternoon who's hopefully going to help me learn my way around the tiles. Cheers. For our final stop of the day, we're making the short journey to meet Virginia Chan, a local tour guide and YouTuber who makes awesome videos exploring Hong Kong's food scene. Luckily for us, she's also a Mahjong tutor who spreads knowledge of the game she loves throughout the city, and she's kindly agreed to share her thoughts and teach us the basics of Mahjong. So let's do this.
Hello, lei hao. My name is Virginia, Virginia Chan, and I own a company and also a YouTube channel under the same name, and it's called Humid with a Chance of Fish Bowls. And basically, we bring people all over Hong Kong food tours and experiences. And when we're not eating through Hong Kong, then I'm probably playing mahjong. <laughs> So lots of people ask me how long I've been playing and who introduced me, and I honestly can't remember. I think mahjong is a very much a generational game passed on from generation to generation. Your mom and your auntie and your grandma will sit you down, kind of like a rites of passage, and someone will direct you, and you don't ever formally learn it, but then you kind of absorb it. It's kind of like my Cantonese as well. The things that I enjoy most about mahjong is, first of all, I think of playing mahjong as coming together with your friends, socializing. If someone's gone on a first date or an interview, we always wait until everybody's gathered around the table first before we start chatting. Secondly, I think the game itself is great fun. There's a lot of strategy and there's a lot of complexity. So my mom always says that she plays it because it helps prevent her from getting Alzheimer's because there's a lot of memorization if you really want to play defensively. I think the traits that you need to be a good mahjong player is one, firstly, good sportsmanship. So at the end of the night, you have to remember you're playing with your friends, and it's just for fun. Two, I think you also have to be really rational and calm about your hand. If your hand isn't great, you have to know when to defend versus being aggressive. I think it's one of those games where it really is true. If you're playing with the same friends, you're also going to be able to read their personality a little bit more. Some people are really indecisive, some people are a little bit reckless, and some people are super conservative, and you'll be able to see all those things just from playing Mahjong. What I enjoy most when I'm teaching Mahjong is the cultural aspects. My objective for everything I do is so I can teach more about Hong Kong's culture, either through eating or now through Mahjong. So for example, one thing is there's a really lucky number in Hong Kong, and that number is eight. And it's because it sounds like wealth and prosperity, which is fat. So eight is fat, and wealth and prosperity is fat. And so that's what I like to also teach during my mahjong classes. Another thing is, before the interest to learn mahjong was within my own friend group or within the Chinese Cantonese community. But now, when I teach, it's mostly the English speakers, and so I feel like now we're expanding the love of mahjong to all these different groups of people, and that makes me so proud that we can keep this ancient game going. I think it's important to keep the culture of mahjong alive because it's a really old game and it's deep rooted in our culture and it's basically a piece of our identity as Hong Kongers. And there are so many life lessons to be learned during mahjong that it'd be such a shame if it died out. The basics of mahjong are pretty simple. Let me explain Hong Kong Cantonese mahjong in a nutshell. In Cantonese style, there are four players and 144 tiles. First, we decide where players are sitting by dice roll. Then, once seated, the players all shuffle the tiles, and that we call dry swimming, yao gong shui, because well, it looks like swimming. And then we put them into formation in the middle of the table. One more dice roll to decide who goes first. Then each player starts with 13 tiles. From there, play goes anti-clockwise, with players taking turns to draw one tile and discarding their least valuable tile until someone makes a winning hand, which is usually made up of 14 tiles. A winning hand consists of four sets and a pair. There are various different suits, honor tiles, and flowers. The combination of which determines how many points the winning player gets for that game. The ultimate winner is the winner with the most points at the end of the play, with a match of mahjong being four rounds, usually 16 games, and that takes around two to three hours. And that's it. That's mahjong in a nutshell. It's easy to learn, but it takes a lifetime to master. Ooh, thank you. Wow. Thank you guys. Bye bye. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye -bye. Well, I don't think I'm going to be winning any tournaments anytime soon, 
But just from that brief introduction to Mahjong, I can already tell that the game is so much fun. And honestly, it comes as no surprise that Hong Kongers and people the world over have been falling in love with this game for generations. While it is of course sad that interest in the game, especially among the younger generations, has been waning here in recent years, I do have hope for the future of Mahjong, with people around the city like Uncle King and Virginia keeping the culture alive and even spreading knowledge of the game to new audiences. I highly recommend learning Mahjong and even gathering your family and friends to get in on the fun. And if we do that, I'm confident that we'll continue to hear the click clacking of towers around the city and beyond for years to come. And that concludes our exploration, delving into the history and culture of Mahjong. I hope you enjoyed learning more about this fascinating game, and if so, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon on Hong Kong Hoods.